Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with uh, Matt Killingsworth, who is uh, not only a, a fellow here at UC Berkeley in the psychology department, but is also a uh, scientific uh, advisor to uh, Facebook. Is that right? Yep. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. So, so Matt, you are uh, well known for uh, being getting in at the early stages of what we might think of as the, the science of happiness or the science of subjective well-being, which mm -hmm. is been the, the study of philosophers and, and, uh, and poets for, you know, centuries, and it's really only recently that, that science has tried to uh, get, a, get a handle on that. Um, why do you think it's, it's so difficult um, for us to think scientifically about something like, like happiness or subjective well-being? Yeah, I think for a long time people thought something like happiness or well-being wasn't measurable, wasn't quantifiable. Uh, I mean, if you go back and look at people talking about this, I think it seems like this ineffable, uh, sort of very subjective, uh, very sort of fuzzy, hard to put your hands on quantity. Um, and that's sensible. I, I can understand why people would view it that way. Uh, I think it's become clear in the last 50 years and especially in the last 20 years, we actually can do a pretty good job of measuring it. Uh, we don't measure it with perfect precision and without any noise. Uh, it has both of those things and, uh, you know, other issues, but uh, we can measure it well enough to do a lot of useful things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, to me, part of what's exciting about that is it gives us kind of a, a top line metric that is the outcome of everything else. Mm -hmm. I, I think we spend a lot of time as individuals, as companies and corporations, as a society, kind of focused on all of these proximal things. And often those proximal things are very measurable. You know, what's the change in GDP or the employment numbers or how much money am I earning this year? Or, you know, how many people are retaining in our organization? We can measure all of those things, uh, but those in a lot of cases, hopefully are adding up to something bigger. Uh, and I think one of those main things that it's adding up to is the quality of human life. And that is really what well-being is trying to quantify. So, so if you're a data-driven company and you now have some way of estimating the happiness of your mm -hmm. customers and your employees and so forth, um, why should uh, a data-driven company care? Why, why would that be um, uh, a, a goal of theirs? And if it is a goal of theirs, how should it be... Um, incorporate into the trade-offs that they might have with, with, with other objectives. Do you, do you see at some point a company publishing a, a happiness uh, income statement and a happiness uh, a balance sheet uh, and giving that to their, to their stakeholders? I think that would be great. Uh, you know, most companies aren't there today, but I'm hopeful that we're going to move in that direction. Um, I think there are a few different reasons that companies could be thinking about that. Uh, one is that you know, as I mentioned today, they're working on kind of all of these individual projects. And I think just for humanitarian reasons, they may want to be thinking about how do we make lives better for our employees? How do we actually add value to the lives of our customers? Um, but at the end of the day, obviously, they're very focused on shareholders and earnings and things like that. Uh, and I think there are very good practical reasons to think about those outcomes as well. Um, so if we kind of understand the sort of psychology of well-being and think about what are sort of the fundamental human needs? How can we sort of measure, quantify, understand the things that are really giving rise to satisfying, enriching, productive careers that really give rise to, you know, product experiences or relationships between companies and consumers that, you know, where my life is better because this company exists. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think when we get to kind of those fundamental causes, and those are things that I think we can trace back from well-being, we, I think, have a much more complete picture of the impact we're having. And by understanding that, I think you can actually have a company that's ultimately, you know, more profitable, has better retention of employees, and is, you know, producing products that hopefully have a good competitive advantage. But the, the analytics journey of most companies starts with the descriptive piece and then ultimately gets to prescriptive yep. down the road and the, the, to, along that journey come experiments to try to tease out causality. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're kind of at the very early stages of, of understanding the, the causal mechanisms in the workplace that, that lead to, to happiness. Um, what can companies do to try to better design experiments that will um, help them figure out how to increase the, the well-being of their workforce. Yeah, I think for a lot of companies, there's a big step to take just in terms of measurement, uh, measuring something like happiness or well-being uh, and doing that on a frequency in, in a way that's going to be able to, you know, 
either measure or fail to measure differences of things that they're trying to do. So if you have an employee program and you, you know, put some segment of employees into that, can you measure some well-being outcomes and probably some other work outcomes like productivity or employee ratings or retention and things like that and understand, did this have a measurable benefit? So I think it starts with an understanding of how to measure well-being and how to measure some of the sort of concomitant psychology. Um, but also, and this is true both for an employee side, I think, and a customer side, I do think there needs to be a sort of deeper thought process for that organization, what are the things that are most relevant? Because I think the right solution is going to be different if you've got software engineers or production line mm -hmm. employees or, you know, you're you're selling a, or serving, a, you know, free product to billions of people or if you're doing, you know, business to business mm -hmm. sales and the, you know, eight figures or something, uh, you need to be approaching those things differently. But I think sort of a merging of, you know, sort of basic science of, sort of the business insight that is starting to emerge in this space and then sort of firm specific understanding of what's really going on in our particular situation, putting those together gives you an approach to measure, to experiment, to understand, and hopefully iterate and move things in a positive direction. And I guess the, the field will develop as we get more people interested in it. Thanks, Matt, for coming. Absolutely, in. thank you.